Hey, this is Dave, and with my brother Rich, we show you how to do a job yourself so you can save a lot of money in the process. Doing a job well means having the right tools, and one of the tools that is really kind of indispensable is having something like this around. This is a multimeter. Uh, Kaiweed sent this to us to review it. And what we thought we'd do is to show you some of the ways you can use it just daily around the house uh, to make things safer or easier, uh, to give you more knowledge and get you, help you to get that job done better. When you first look at these, they can be a little bit intimidating. There's tons of different letters and symbols on, on the dial. At first glance, it can be like, oh, I don't know. But uh, once you get to know a few of these, pretty quickly you'll see the value in having one of these around. Uh, the first thing you do is when you feel this, it feels really good. It's, it's substantial. There's no give in the dial as you go from point to point. Kaiweech multimeter uh, comes with batteries, with test leads, comes with a temperature lead, stand feature on the back to give you hands-free operation. The beauty of a, a multimeter is they're really not that expensive. Whenever you turn it on, and we'll look at temperature first, whenever you turn it on, you'll see that like in that in this case these two are blinking so that tells you where to put the red and the black test lead in to get the correct measurement real helpful uh, when you're just getting started to know exactly which port those leads go into depending on what you're measuring one handy use of the multimeter is being able to check your thermometers to make sure that they're showing the correct temperature or at least having a way to gauge how far the thermometer might be off and so in this case here, we have a candy thermometer, we have the, the Kiwi's the multimeter thermometer, and then also the thermometer that comes with the coffee pot itself. Well, that's about 209 right there. So the multimeter is still reading it. Now it's, reading, it's cooled down some to 192.89C. And this one is, looks like it was at 90C, so these two are much closer in agreement than is that thermometer. I got this grill secondhand, and I really have no idea how good that thermometer on the grill itself is, and so that's why we'll use this to check it. Or you can hear in the background I've got coffee beans roasting. And put the probe inside the grill, but this is reading about 515, 520. So that's good to know. Uh, rather than just relying on the temperature gauge on your grill, uh, you can double check it with the multimeter. If you're like us and you got a junk drawer, sometimes you can lose track of what's really a good battery, what's a used battery, what's a dead battery. We can go ahead and look at each of those batteries, whether they're in the case or just laying around, and get an exact measurement. Are they still worth having or are they on their way out? To test these batteries out, uh, they're double-A batteries and it says 1.5 volts there and so we're looking for a measurement at 1.5 or more uh, for them to be good and so here's the volts we're going to turn volt measurement so we'll turn our dial to volts and as soon as we do we get these two ports blinking so that means these is where we want to hook up our leads to so the red goes to the red black goes to the black and then we can take the probes, the tips off the probes. And so now all we have to do is go ahead and put the red to the positive side and we'll just hold it on the metal there and then touch the black to the back side, the bottom side of it. And it's a little hard one handed, but there you can see that measurement is 1.349. This battery's dead. So if you have a drunk drawer full of batteries, this is a great way to, to clean them out, figure out which ones still have life in them and those that don't. This one's 1.348, so both of these batteries are dead. They're far below the 1.5. Here's some fresh nine volt batteries that we can go ahead and test. And it works much the same way. One of these is positive. This small one's positive, so that one's negative. Take the positive and touch metal to metal and the negative metal to metal and that says 9.59 so that is over the nine volts that it's rated at so that that battery is fresh and ready to go again super handy so you can find out which batteries are good and which ones aren't one way you can use a multimeter is to test your car battery and so we'll turn it to volts right there and it's just as simple as putting the red on the red and the black on the black 
And there you can see the reading on this car battery is 12.33, which is low. Uh, that's about 60%. Here's what a good battery should look like. Or on this vehicle, same deal. Red to the positive terminal, terminal black to black, and you're reading 12.61. That's a full battery right there. Another feature of this uh, multimeter is the uh, min-max feature. So we're we'll turning it to volts. What we're gonna do is, uh, my brother's gonna go ahead and start the car in a second. I'm gonna put these on the respective terminals. Okay, and then go ahead and start it, Rich. when the car is turned on and we get this reading of 14.52, uh, that's showing us that the charging system is charging the battery while the car is running uh, to a good amount. And so therefore, that whole, the whole charging system is working. Now we want to check and see how much voltage exists in the battery when it's being turned on, when power from the battery is being used uh, by the starter and as the lowest it'll go. And so, uh, to test that, we put it on voltage, or we want to see what the minimum voltage is when we start the car. Put one lead on the red, black on the black. Even now, while, it's, while those are both connected, we'll hit this to get to minimum, and that starts this recording. So go ahead and start it, Rich. Okay. All right, so there we got our minimum was 10.26. So there's more than enough power for the car, for this battery to start the car, uh, more than the minimum, so which would be 9.6. Uh, this battery is five years old, but even so, though it's only at about a 60% charge level, it still has enough to adequately uh, start the car. And so therefore, uh, this battery is still okay. Another useful feature of a multimeter is to check for continuity. A while ago, I... Uh, cut this extension cord by accident when I was using a hedge trimmer and just went and sliced the line and I repaired it. If you ever wanted to check and make sure that was the repair was done right or well, or if you have an extension cord that just doesn't seem to be working or it's working intermittently, you can check for continuity. And that means, are the wires that run through the whole cord broken or are they solid, offering continuous power? So in this case, uh, all we have to do is turn the dial uh, to the that ohm omega or ohm sign and uh, this kind of like the squiggly line sound sign and that's for continuity and then we hit our function key because we want to get to the sound symbol there it is right there and that'll give us a tone for continuity as well so we take the probe put it into this put it into one of these holes and then we're going to test on the other side of the cord, which one of these this one is connected to? Not that one, not that one, that one. So it gives you a tone and a light on this multimeter, which is nice, letting you know you have a, a good connection. And it also gives you a number, and that number is 0.2. Uh, you want to see a low number below one. And that lets you know that that is you do have continuity on that side. If the electric water heater uh, inside each of these is an element, an upper element, and a lower element, and you can use the multimeter to test the continuity. If you notice that your the amount of hot water you're getting is less uh, than normal, uh, you can test both of these using the continuity setting on your multimeter to see if one of those elements has gone bad. And if it is that's a good place to start uh, those can be pulled out and replaced uh, without re having to replace your whole water heater in the same way you can do continuity continuity tests on incandescent light bulbs just using the one probe that will touch this side of the light and one that will touch the bottom of the light that button and there you get a tone and so you know that that light bulb is good same thing with uh, say an automotive light because the old incandescent light bulbs have the, the element, that wire element there, what you're doing by touching these ends 
is making sure that there's a continuous line of power that goes up up these ends to across the the wire element and down again and if you have continuity that means that light bulb is good if you watch any of our videos before you you know that we've kind of converted over to battery powered lawnmower weed eater battery powered everything and we've been using battery powered tools drills and the like for quite some time these are 20 volt 1.5 amp batteries and you can test these just the same all you do is take your multimeter go to volts we're at dc already batteries are dc power on these batteries there's a b minus and a b plus there's a plus and a minus on all the batteries and so that's what we're going we're going to do we'll do red into the positive side and we'll do black into the negative side and you can see that battery is running at 20.47 so long as it's over whatever it's rated at the battery is still good uh, these batteries have been running down lately they're running down faster and faster so i know they're they're getting older and slower same thing on this battery here this one's not been charged and you'll be able to see why that one's coming in at 19.92 okay now that this my low battery is all charged up we can take a look so all charged up it's at 19.99 that, that battery's in need to be replaced uh, whenever it won't charge up to its whatever it's rated at then you know you have a problem and then this one is freshly freshly charged as well and this is pretty pretty much a new battery and that one comes in at 20.58 so that's an easy way to test your tool batteries make sure they're still they still have enough health in them to be used another cool feature with the multimeter is that it has this thing called ncv and what that is, is non-contact voltage indicator. And so by turning this to NCV and then pressing the function key, and that says live, that's for a different test. But let's say I want to test to find wires that I can't see. I press the function key again to get to NCV. So all I have to do is hold it up to the wall. And then when I get green, it's close to some voltage. So you know if you were going to hang something by this spot or if you were going to cut into the wall, you know there's some voltage. And if you keep on going, where the red light comes on, you know the, the wire is actually very close to that spot. If you saw in a previous video, I had to take out this wall so that I could get a couch into the basement. Granted, not everybody has to do that. One thing that surprised me was that when I was cutting out this, this whole section of wall, there was a, a, a line here, a live electrical line, that I didn't know about. Now, had I had my uh, multimeter, I could have just turned it to NCV, press the function key, and then you just run this against the wall. And when it goes green, and it's telling me that there's a line right there. And so if I move over, same thing, so I know that this line is somewhere around here. And so when you're cutting into a wall, you know uh, to be careful in that particular area. We certainly haven't covered every possible option on a multimeter, but I hope in this video you got to see, if you're a DIYer, it's such a useful tool. Uh, we'll have an Amazon link down below the description if you wanna pick one of these up, but they're so inexpensive and they're so useful, uh, it makes good sense to have one of these laying around just in case for your next project. Hope this video helps. Don't forget to subscribe. We've got lots more videos coming. Thanks a lot for watching. We'll see you next time.